My objective in this walkthrough is to recreate the same BI solution using the Power BI Designer as I did earlier in the uh, Excel uh, Office 365 BI tools. So, uh, and this is as of February 2015. Now, if you just go out to PowerBI.com, sign up for the preview, you can install the designer. I want to make one configuration change here under File and in the file settings, I want to change the fast combine settings to ignore privacy levels. So this won't prompt us every time we connect to a uh, web data source. So I'm going to go to query, and this essentially is Power Query. And I'm going to create a new query uh, that will be from the web. And then like uh, we did before, and I suggest that you take your time to look at the earlier presentations that uh, I did using the Excel tool. We're going to get uh, UFO sightings data, and this is actually real data. There's about 100,000 uh, records of UFO sightings that are available on the National UFO Reporting Center, which you can get to here. And we're going to go to the reporting database and get that information grouped by shape. So here you see all of the reports or sightings by shape, and I'm going to copy this URL to the clipboard, and then back in the Power BI Designer, I'm going to paste that into this box, and that will actually go out, run this query, and bring back a table of uh, results. You can see that this is table zero, which I'll rename once I uh, open up this query in the editor, and we'll just give that a name that makes sense, like sightings. And uh, you'll see all of my results here with the shape in the left column. I'll rename that from reports to shape. And um, then I'll also uh, delete the count column. Now there's one item here that I don't want to return, and that's the unspecified shapes. And again, I explain this in detail in the Excel um, example that I, I did before. So let's just remove the count column, and there we just have a table of shapes. And this is going to be the foundation that we'll lay the rest of the solution on top of. That's why I called it sightings. Now, if we drill down into one of the shape pages, you can see that it passes the name of that shape in the URL. And that's important because we'll want to um, use that as a parameter. So I'm copying that URL to the clipboard. There's my shape. You can see that gets passed into that page. And I'm going to create another query from the web. Just paste that URL to get started. And we'll run that. And it'll go out and it'll run that query for that shape. And uh, so we'll choose table zero again, we'll edit that query, and I'm going to rename this sightings for shape, and this query will be converted into a function, and we'll pass the shape name in as a parameter. So I'm going to uh, uh, go to the advanced editor, and here you can see this on the uh, view tab, we we'll go to the advanced editor, and then I'll just modify this query just by adding in parentheses the name of my parameter, which is shape, equals greater than. And then you'll see here in the URL string, the, you see the literal name of that shape. Well, I want to replace that with my parameter. So I just do some simple string concatenation using double quotes and the ampersand. And uh, that's just concatenating that parameter into that URL. And that allows us to call this function passing in the shape, which on each call will return a table of results. So we can test that by invoking it here, typing the name of a shape, and that brings back the results for that shape. So I'm going to remove that step in the query editor, and then we'll go back to our sightings query. There's one change that I want to make. I don't want to enable loading the results of this query, so we just just click on uh, on uh, enable loading, because we don't want the results of this query to to be loaded into a separate table. So I'm going to add a column, and we're just adding a blank column, and it asks me what I want to call that. I can call this anything I want; it really doesn't matter because it's just a placeholder. I'll call it sightings, and this is going to be the name of my function. In this case, sightings for shape. And then in parentheses, I pass the name of the shape column, which I can double click or use the insert button. And then I 
just type the close parenthesis, click OK, and that will actually go out and call that query. Now, you'll see that this brings back a table of results for every row, for every shape. And then if I click the expand button, you'll see all of the columns that will be returned. I'm going to uncheck this box, use the original column name, and then I, I don't want to bring back the shape again because I already have that in my first column. So when I click OK, that's going to just bring back a preview. So it's just a sample of my records um, for each of my shapes. But when I actually load the results of the query, it's actually going to go out and run this several times, which will take a few minutes to run. So there you see the date and time. Uh, these columns are all returned as text. And since this date and time is text, the first thing I want to do is convert it to a uh, date and time um, value. So first of all, I'll call that report date. I'll change the type to, uh, I guess I, I changed that to date and time. I want that to be a date only. So I need to do two things. I need to change the type, and I also need to transform it into a date only. The difference between changing the type and transforming it is that the a date and time value always contains a date and a time component. And I need my report date to include only the date, which actually means midnight on that date. And then the report time here, I want this to be only the time without the, the date. So I'll change the type to time, and then I'll transform it into time as well. So internally, there is a date in there, but it, it doesn't matter. As long as we've done the same thing to the column values that I want to match that up to, then the, uh, the values will, will be the same. So I'm going to, to create two empty queries. So this is just a blank query. This is going to be the foundation for my report date table. So I just I'll call it report date. And I, I'm going to, to copy and paste some M script here. I, I it worked this out previously, and I'm not going to take a lot of time to explain this code works, but this is using uh, the M function list.dates. So dates is a method actually of the list collection. And um, this takes two dates. It takes a beginning date and then it takes an ending date. The beginning date is uh, January 1st on 1900, which you can see there. And then I'm actually going to calculate the end date based on today. So I need to use some functions that gets the current date and then I'll convert that into an actual date time value and um, then this will return a table of dates starting with January 1st, 1900, all the way through the current date. Now, earlier when I did the Excel-based table, I, I calculated the rest of these columns using DAX functions in Power Pivot. In the current Power BI designer, we don't have Power Pivot. We don't have a sophisticated modeling tool. So I will actually need to calculate the rest of my date part columns using mscript, which is a little less familiar to me. So I had to go and, and work this out. So I'm going to, first of all, load that into a table. We'll go ahead and accept the defaults. And then uh, we'll rename that to date. And in my, my date reference table, I want to have the year, month, and day. So I'm going to... Uh, first of all, I'll make sure that that column is a date type, and I just want the date value. So again, I, I do I change the uh, the data type and I transform it. I'm going to duplicate that. We'll call this year. And then again, we use the change type. That is a date. And then we use transform and change that into a year. Now, Something I found is that when we're um, reporting on this data, if if we're using a, a number, the reporting tool is actually going to want to aggregate that. So to mitigate that problem, I'm going to create a text version of my year as well. And we'll call that year text. The only thing I'm doing differently here is I've just, just changed that type to text rather than a number. And so um, there's my month. I'm going to convert that to a month using the transform menu.
and then I'm also adding the day of week, which might be handy for reporting, and we'll use the day of week function for that. And I think that's good enough for our report date reference table. So we'll go ahead and add one more query. This is going to be my time of day query. And for, for this, I, I want one row per minute of the day. And if you do the math, um, there are 1,440 minutes in a day. I want one row per minute. I want that to begin at midnight, which is actually minute number zero. So this is simply going to be a list in a range, so you see the syntax here, 0 through 1439. 1439 is going to represent the minute that occurs on 1159 p.m. And then I can use some, some mathematical functions to calculate the minutes based on that offset minute number. So we'll add another column, we'll just add a blank column. And this one is going to be called time of day. And uh, I need this to be uh, values that match up to my report time column in the sightings table. So I need to actually calculate a time value. And through the magic of video editing, we make a quick transition here to the finished code. You don't have to watch me debug. And we'll just take a look at the final result, and I'll just explain what's going on. The time function takes three arguments, hours, minutes, and seconds. We get hours by taking the minute number, dividing by 60, and using round down to truncate the decimals. Then we get the modulus of the minute divided by 60, which gives us a whole number for the minutes. And then for seconds, we just pass it zero. So that actually brings back the time uh, converted from that minute number. And there you can see that it's working. I like to format my script using carriage returns and leading spaces for readability. So there you can see that uh, we'll just uh, format that to make it a little easier to read and makes it a lot easier to maintain moving forward. Uh, later on, months from now, when I look at this uh, code and need to uh, understand what's going on, it'll be a whole lot easier uh, when it's formatted like this. Now, having the time of day down to the minute allows me to build a, a model that conforms, but that's a little too granular for my reporting needs. So what I'd like to do is create another column called uh, time block. And I'm just going to use a mathematical expression to essentially take that time and break it down into much larger, less granular blocks. So we'll, we'll break it down into 30 minute blocks. I'm going to paste some code in here that uh, essentially will will uh, just round that to 30 minute increments so there's that code uh, where I'm, I'm just taking the minute number dividing it by 60 to get the hour and then i'm taking the minute number and, and dividing it by 30 and um, then we're rounding that and uh, multiplying it by 30 so that's that's going to be our minute and then there's second we don't care about so i pass a zero to that one into the, the time function, hour, minute, and second. So there you see the results of that calculation where uh, the time of the day for every minute uh, gets grouped into 30-minute uh, segments for reporting, which you'll see a little later on as I use that. In the earlier demonstration, I had used an Excel table to create a category of UFO shapes to ease reporting. So we're going to import that uh, workbook. Uh, here we have our shape categories. The shapes are uh, in the uh, the leftmost column of the table and then the categories on the right and this will just make reporting a lot easier so we'll import that workbook as another query and uh, just rename a few things we also want to filter out the uh, unspecified records since uh, uh, those uh, uh, don't map to anything so that uh, is a data conformity or perhaps a data quality issue that we need to deal with. And so there is our shape category table. Until we have a full model designer built into the uh, Power BI designer, I need to do all of my work in Power Query. And uh, since I need a count of sightings in, in Power Pivot, I just counted records using the, the count rows function here, I'm actually just going to create a column called sightings count that has a fixed value of one, and then I'm going to sum that up. So that's the easiest way to get a record count um, by actually storing the value one and then uh, aggregating that. So we have that column. And now I'm going to jump over to our report. 
in the Power BI Designer, now we, we skip the modeling step. We just move directly from the query to the report tool. And when we do, it actually loads all of the tables up into the data model behind the scenes. This really is a Power Pivot model, um, or just called the data model. And, and uh, that is a semantic model that uh, will be loaded up to the server when this uh, solution is deployed. So you can see all the queries running, loading up those those tables in the model. 